Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snails, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our playlist called Labs. In previous videos, we talked about beta-2 microglobulin, the true and the pseudo-choline esterase enzyme, the anti-acetylcholine receptor antibodies, which can be seen in myasthenia gravis. We talked about sentinel lymph node biopsy of breast cancer, and we talked about nuclear bone scan. And for the last several videos, we have been talking about lab tests related to renin and hypertension. Today it's no different. It's time to talk about renin stimulation test, which can help us distinguish between primary hyperaldosteronism versus secondary hyperaldosteronism. Let's get started. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order, especially my video titled Plasma Renin Activity Assay. Where does renin come from? It comes from the kidney. When the kidney feels low perfusion, such as hypotension, the kidney gets mad and starts to shout out. Not profanities, but renin. Renin converts angiotensinogen, which comes from the liver, into angiotensin 1. Why? Because when the kidney feels the hypotension, the kidney wants to raise the blood pressure back to normal. In order to do this, you need to constrict vessels. Look at the name, angiotensin. Tense the angio, constrict the vessels. Also, angiotensin 2 has another function, which is aldosterone release. Aldosterone will reabsorb salt and water from the kidney to raise the blood volume and increase blood pressure back to normal. Remember that angiotensin 2 has two functions. Function 1, constrict vessels. Function number 2, secrete aldosterone from the adrenal cortex. Where does aldosterone come from? Adrenal cortex. Be specific, zona glomerulosa. What does aldosterone do? Four functions. It reabsorbs salt, reabsorbs water, excretes potassium, excretes hydrogen. What's the name of the disease where I have a tumor or hyperplasia of the glomerulosa of the cortex and therefore I secrete too much aldosterone? This is called Conn syndrome or primary hyperaldosteronism. But what if for some reason the problem did not start here? The problem started somewhere else. Let's say that I have hypotension for whatever reason. And because of this, renin went up a lot. And this high renin increased angiotensin 1, which became angiotensin 2, which stimulates the glomerulosa, which will make more aldosterone. Since the disaster did not originate here, we call this secondary hyperaldosteronism. So when the problem originates in the adrenal cortex, it's called primary. When the problem originates somewhere else, it's called secondary. One way to tell the difference is to measure the plasma renin activity assay, which we talked about in a previous video. Remember that in primary hyperaldosteronism, renin is low, but in secondary, renin is high. Why is renin low in primary? Because you started with too much aldosterone as a negative feedback, you will inhibit renin. Why would renin go up when you have too much aldosterone already? What's the point? The purpose of renin is to raise aldo. But if aldo is already high, then why do we need renin? We don't, so it decreases. But in secondary, the disaster started somewhere else, which raised the renin, and then the high renin raised the aldosterone. Here is primary hyperaldosteronism, or CON. Where did the disaster start? In the adrenal cortex, raising the aldosterone, as a negative feedback, aldosterone will suppress the renin. But in secondary hyperaldosteronism, renin went up first, which raised the aldosterone. So one way to tell the difference between the two diseases is to measure the renin. Another is to plot aldosterone to renin ratio. A third way is to use the renin stimulation test. It can help you tell the difference between primary versus secondary hyperaldo, both of which are causes of secondary hypertension. So here is how you perform the renin stimulation test. Step number one, the patient is supine, lying flat in bed and on restricted salt diet. And you measure the plasma renin activity. Step number two, the patient stands up or sits upright for one to two hours. Still, my patient is on low salt diet and you measure the plasma renin a second time. If there is no difference in the renin activity between step one and step two, this is primary hyperaldosteronism. Why? I don't get it. Because in primary hyperaldosteronism, aldosterone is so high. 
reabsorbing so much salt and so much water. So the plasma volume expands a lot. So it doesn't matter whether you're supine or upright. In either case, the kidney is well perfused and the kidney is not shouting profanities that much. So it really doesn't matter whether you stand up, sit down, turn around, or lie in the supine position. However, if renin increased from step 1 to step 2, i.e. renin was higher in step 2 than step 1, then this is secondary hyperaldosteronism because the plasma expansion is not as severe as in the primary hyperaldosteronism. Translation, when I stand up, venous return goes down because gravity pulls blood to my ankles. If less input is going to the heart, less output will come out of the heart. Less cardiac output equals less blood pressure, which equals less renal artery perfusion, which equals the kidney shouting more renin in the upright position relative to the supine position. That's how you do the renin stimulation test. This is the purpose. Of the renin stimulation test. If it's primary hyperaldo, how do you treat it? Usually there is a tumor in the adrenal cortex, just remove it. But in secondary hyperaldo, it's more complicated because you have to establish the cause first and then you treat the underlying cause. And here is how renin stimulation test can help us tell the difference. Another cause of hyperaldosteronism that is often ignored because most doctors are doofuses with a stethoscope is liver disease or kidney disease. Why? Because normally speaking, after aldosterone has performed its function, we metabolize it. We degrade it into glucuronic acid and other metabolites. They will end up in the stool and the urine. But if I have liver disease, do you think I'm able to metabolize this aldosterone? No, I'm not. What's going to happen to this aldosterone? It will go up. Hyperaldosteronism. Can this lead to hypertension? You bet. Translation, liver disease can cause hypertension. Also, kidney disease, because now the kidney cannot excrete aldosterone, can lead to hyperaldosteronism and hypertension. Yet another way, kidney disease causes hypertension. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. You can even argue that patient who had their colon removed or their small intestine removed or both of them removed might have higher levels of aldosterone. You can even make the case that severe constipation can lead to this. But of course, this hypertension will be temporary until the constipation is relieved, which means this is not a chronic hypertension. Do you want to learn more about kidney function, the micturition reflex, glomerular filtration rate, renal plasma flow, the proximal tubule, the loop of Henle, the distal tubule, the collecting ducts, etc.? Then download my renal physiology course at Medicosis Perfect fixnetis.com. Do you want to learn about acute fatty liver disease of pregnancy, cholestasis of pregnancy, preeclampsia and eclampsia, which can lead to liver disease and kidney disease during pregnancy? Then download my OBGYN high yields course at medicosisperfectsnetis.com. And for more topics about urology, such as epispadius, hypospadius, acute epididymitis, testicular torsion, and much more, download my surgery high yields course. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button you can support me here or here go to my website to download my courses be safe stay happy study hard this is medicosis perfect snellus where medicine makes perfect sense